I'm an all-around player. I like defense, but I'll play forward and I'll play midfield. I'll even play goalie. Soccer has been a huge part of Bree McMahon's life since she was in kindergarten. It's just my outlet for everything, and it's just what I do and what I enjoy. Her love of the sport and her skill on the field even landed her a soccer scholarship to Brevard College in North Carolina. But Bree's life of soccer and school was about to change. In the fall of 2009, Bree was helping wash cars at a fundraiser when one of those cars accidentally accelerated, striking Bree and pinning her against a wall. I remember every moment. That's kind of imprinted on my mind like a tattoo on somebody's skin. I remember her facial expressions when she was hit. I remember her disappearing as she hit the ground. I knew it was pretty bad, but I didn't know to what extent. But I had a feeling like I was probably, I, I might lose something, but I was hoping I wouldn't. Bree spent the next six days in a drug-induced coma. I was absolutely petrified. I, you know, knew she was, she was upset but I was really afraid for her and had no idea uh, after the amputation how we were going to ever tell her. When she woke up, her parents delivered the heartbreaking news. Bree's right leg had to be amputated. I kind of already knew it, so I was like, okay, when can I like, get back out there? When can I start running again? Like, what can I do? With her mind set on running again, Bree spent weeks in the hospital undergoing 12 surgeries and several blood transfusions. I know that like people like my grandfather, like like a bunch of my family members, like blood helps save them and keep them strong. So I was like, oh, I should donate. And then, so I donated and then I ended up needing a lot of blood for my accident. Her body, the doctors told us, is so tired of producing red blood cells, it can't. And she was becoming very, very anemic and very weak. And they gave her several pints of blood. Within hours, she was perked up and happier and had more energy. So I, I don't think people realize the impact they can have so easily on somebody else. Determined to beat the odds, Bree goes to physical therapy four days a week and is already working on her third prosthetic leg. What are you looking forward to most in the future? I'm um, being able to play again. I don't have feeling in my foot. Like I'm starting to get some back, but I don't have a lot of feeling. So I can't really play soccer if you can't feel a ball. Like the inscription on her class ring that reads no limits, that's how Bree lives her life and inspires others to do the same. I wouldn't be in a ball still crying. And here she is saying, no, I'm gonna continue with my life. I'm gonna go forward. I'm going to run, I'm going to try, I'm going to do, and I'm not going to let anything stop me. And we're really, really proud of her for taking that attitude and for waking up each day, putting that, you know, taking a step forward, not letting things get her down or hold her back. With the support of her family and teammates, the help of doctors and physical therapists, and the gift of life from blood donors, Bree is confident she'll be back on the field where she belongs in no time. I'm Nancy Gay for Florida's Blood Centers, where local heroes are saving lives.